Hi, I'm Mike, and on this installment of Summit Racing Quick Flex, we're going to talk about selecting the proper gear set for your vehicle. The selection of the proper gear set is critical to the vehicle's overall performance. It's important that the proper gear set is selected due to the fact this can have a drastic effect on the vehicle's acceleration and cruise RPM. In this video, we're going to dis discuss how the gear set operates, how to determine what gear ratio currently is installed on the in the vehicle, the aspects of the vehicle that can have a, an effect on the gear set being selected, and how to go about selecting the proper gear set for the ring that's in your vehicle. The first thing we need to discuss is how the ring and pinion operate. The ring and pinion is going to consist of two gears. You're going to have your pinion gear, which is your drive gear, and you're going to have your ring gear, which is the driven gear. The pinion gear is what receives the motion from the drive shaft that's being transferred throughout the drivetrain. And as that drive shaft spins, it goes ahead and spins the pinion gear at the same time. This pinion gear is then going to be connected to the ring gear. And as the pinion gear rotates, it's going to rotate the ring gear. This is then going to go ahead and put the axles into motion, then the wheels into motion, and move the vehicle forward or backwards depending on what gear the transmission is in. The relationship of these two gears is what has the effect on how the vehicle accelerates because the pinion gear is going to have X amount of teeth in relationship to the ring gear and this is what's going to affect the vehicle's acceleration and cruise RPM as an end result. Often a point of confusion there is only one way to accurately determine what ratio is currently installed in the ring in your vehicle. It's a misconception that sometimes that you can go ahead and count the number of, of tire rotations in relationship to the drive shaft to determine what ratio is in the vehicle, whether that there's some sort of tag on the rear end that tells you what ratio is currently installed. The only way to determine what ratio currently is in the vehicle is to count the number of teeth on the ring gear and divide it by the number of teeth on the pinion gear. As an end result, this will give you the ratio that is in that vehicle. For example, if we had a ring gear that had 41 teeth on it, and a pinion gear that had 11 teeth, and we divided the two, that would give us a 373 gear ratio. The reason why it's important to understand what ratio is currently installed in, in the rear end of your vehicle is because you need to determine which direction you need to go for your vehicle application in comparison to how the vehicle is operating now. There are five basic aspects of the vehicle we're going to look at to determine what ratio is, is, is right for our specific application. The things that are going to have an effect on the gear selection are the tire size because the tire height or a tire diameter can have a, a drastic effect on how the gear set reacts in the vehicle. Um, the cam profile. the cam. A cam, every cam has an operating range. We want to make sure that the vehicle is going to accelerate properly to get into that cam's operating range quickly enough or effectively. Uh, we're going to look at torque converter selection. What stall is a converter that's installed in that vehicle? Because what can happen is we can have a torque converter that say has like a 3500 stall, but we have let's say a 308 gear set installed in that vehicle with a fairly tall tire. What that does for us then is that vehicle never gets, when it, when it comes to the cruise RPM, it never gets to the point where the converter actually gets into the stall of the converter and the converter continually slips, overheats, causes poor mileage issues and things of that nature. We're going to look at cruise RPM, which is once again relates directly to that stall converter selection. We want to make sure that the vehicle has a reasonable cruise RPM if it's going to be driven on the street. We don't want to be going down the street at 70 miles an hour and with a, let's say, a 411 gear in the vehicle and have a cruise RPM of 3200, 3500 RPM. That will put way too much load on the engine, cause excess engine wear, poor fuel mileage, things of that nature. We want to make sure it matches what we're doing with the vehicle. And the vehicle use. Once again, all the last three of these kind of relate to one another. Is this a drag race vehicle? Is it a truck that's being driven off-road? Is it strictly street driven? We want to make sure that gear set is going to go ahead and match what we're doing with that vehicle as an end result. 
Here are some common ratios that can be used as a guide to determine what gearing is correct for your application. If we had a daily driver, 255 to 323 gear ratios typically work best. Whereas a street strip application, we usually would use a 342 to 390 gear ratio. And race applications commonly use 410 and above gear ratios. So what effect will different ratio gear sets have on a vehicle's operation? Well, let's say, for example, we had a vehicle and we installed a set of 273 gears in it. 273 gears was considered to be a numerically lower gear set. And this type of gear set will, will give the vehicle slow or poor uh, acceleration from a dead stop, but at the same time will give us lower cruise RPMs, um, as well as more top-end speed or more top-end mile per hour. This makes it a, a good street gear, a good daily driven type gear um, for highway use or a vehicle we're looking to get maybe better fuel mileage out of. Um, and, and just from a comfort standpoint, it will tax the vehicle less when it comes to engine RPMs. In comparison, if we were to look at installing a set of 456 gears in that same vehicle, a 456 gear will give you way better uh, acceleration from a dead stop, but also go ahead and tax the motor much more when it comes to cruising, cruising speeds on the highway. And what it will essentially do is it will lower the, the max mile per hour that the vehicle is able to achieve because it's making the engine reach its max RPM potential so much quicker in comparison to the 273 gear set. This makes a 456 gear um, used more commonly in off-road and race applications um, because of the fact that in those types of applications we want to really reach the max RPM of the engine much quicker because we're trying to get to the vehicle to accelerate at a much quicker rate of speed. The only times that where these rules kind of don't hold true is if, if we get into a situation where we have a vehicle with extremely tall tires. An extremely tall tire will have a drastic effect on how that gear rate ratio responds in that vehicle. So let's say we had like a 40 inch tall tire. Well now with that 40 inch tall tire, if we were to have that 456 gear, that may effectively make that 456 gear actually act more like that 273 gear in that specific situation. Um, in the end, that would make us really be, be more of a candidate for maybe something like a, a, a 513 gear or a 588 gear to get our cruise RPM to the point where we want it to be. So just remember, we've got to look at all the aspects of the vehicle as a whole to truly determine what ratio is right for our application. Now that you've determined what ratio gear set is correct for your application, there are three things you need to determine about the rim before making your selection of that gear set. The first thing that you need to, to look at is the type of rim that's in the car or truck or whatever you may have. Uh, certain vehicle applications had the availability of different rear ends depending on the vehicle options or the rear end could have been changed out in that vehicle at some point in time or another. So it's important for you to get underneath the vehicle, take a look at the rear end to determine exactly what type of housing was used um, in your vehicle, specific vehicle application to determine what gear set is correct for it. Sometimes this is also going to be determined when you have rims that are similar to one another by measuring the outer diameter of the ring gear as well. You know, there's a, there's a small difference in housing size between, say, a GM 8 and a quarter in comparison to a GM 8 and a half or in. So a lot of times, you, you, if you don't know how to identify just by looking at it, you have to take the inspection cover off, measure the diameter of the ring gear, and go forward from there. The second thing you need to look at is if you have a GM or Dana axle. Some GM or Dana axles use different series of gears. What that means is they use different thicknesses of ring gears depending on the type of carrier that was used. Now if the vehicle already has the original gear set installed in it, what you can do is you can use that ratio of gear set to determine what series it was uh, according to the parameters of what the carry series, series was for that specific type rear end. You can find that information a lot of times on our website listed with the gear sets or in the manufacturer catalogs if you have those available to you. The third thing that may need to be determined is the type of gear that you're going to use for your application. Uh, there are two, basically two different versions of gears produced. There's a, a performance gear, um, also known as street gear a lot of times, and there's also a pro series gear. The performance slash street series gear is designed for, for applications 
um, where the vehicle is making more power than stock and you want a little stronger gear, a little more performance oriented type gear um, in comparison to what the stock gear was. A Pro Series gear on the other hand though is a much softer gear and Pro Series gears are designed for drag race applications only. And the reason why the gears are softer is they're designed to absorb the impact between the sticky tires and the, the harsh impact of the drivetrain being transmitted through that gear set so it doesn't chip teeth and things of that nature. What would happen is if you put a pro, a pro gear in a street car is that you would wear that gear out very quickly and that's why they're designed for drag race applications only. So remember when looking for a gear uh, most likely you're going to need a performance or street gear um, and, and pro series gears once again are for drag race use only. One last note about selecting a gear set for your rear end is that sometimes in some GM um, and Dana axle applications where, where carrier series is, is a concern um, is that you'll have a carrier that a, the gear set or the gear rate, the ratio of gear set that you want to install on your end is not available for that series of carrier. In some situations there is a solution to this problem and that's what's known as a ring gear spacer. A ring gear spacer is designed to take up the extra space um, that will be created by having a series of gear that is higher than what's designed for your carrier. Because typically a two series gear will be much thicker than what a three series gear is. So what will happen is, is that you'll have this new thinner gear that's designed for a three series carrier. And, and if you were to disattach it to the two series, series carrier, what would happen is, is that it would be too far away from the pinion gear and the two would not attach to one another properly. What the spacer will do is it will it'll go in between the carrier and the ring gear, taking up that access space, making the ring and pinion gears contact one another properly. When you purchase one of these, it will come with new longer bolts as well to go ahead and ensure that they, uh, the bolts seat completely. Um, and these are good probably up to about 450 horsepower or below. Anything past that you, you do not want to use a ring gear spacer. There's also a gear selection calculator on summitracing.com under the expert advice tab that will help you determine what gear ratio is best for your application. For more quick flicks visit the Summit Racing YouTube channel. Visit Summit Racing online at www.summitracing.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com backslash summit racing or like summit racing on facebook at facebook.com backslash summit racing equipment